Okay. Hello. Hello. So we're here. Sky Haven. Our team is like really aggressive in T spawn. I'm assuming we're in defense. Bombs are playing B. We could make a play in B. We probably could have taken your time there. She didn't really know that you were there. Yeah, you walk to the garage, just makes sense. The garage is clear now. We walk to the sites. I think you can like easily take your time with these shots because she doesn't even know you're here. Yeah. Nice. Good first round. I I've been trying to learn Go how to pop with the ghosts. Yeah. It it's been a learning curve. Okay. Uh, one thing I'll say is that nice. after the round is over, for sure, like everyone's dead. No reason to reload. Just whip out your knife. And basically, everyone should always do this whip out your knife and just run around and search for guns. And while you're doing this, also press tab to see what guns your team had your team has and if anybody needs to upgrade. So for example, like if you're let's see what happens at the beginning of the round, who has what? Well not even beginning but like middle of the round. Hello. Let's see who gets kills. Sage has a classic. Pepper also has a classic. She still has a classic. Presumably, if they didn't pick up any guns after this, then what you can do is that you kill this jet, you run over to whoever is defusing the bomb, in this case it's Sage, you drop your pistol in front of her, tell her, hey, pick up my pistol once you're done defusing, while you go run around and search for a gun. Nice. Good first round. So you get the shove, which is no great, way. but your team can also use that ghost, most likely. Mm -hmm. Just some min max things. So see, let's see what they got. They didn't pick anything up. Nobody picked anything up. And Sage actually buys a ghost. Just kind of a waste of money. Both of them buy a ghost, which yeah. is a waste of money, because you could have saved the money. <laughs> One thing I would do is that uh, because you're deciding to upgrade to a spectator, which is perfectly fine, but you also have a deagle. So because... Two yeah, I don't think it's was... yeah, go ahead. necessary to upgrade, is it? Huh? What I like to do, I like to have like a mix of people on pistols, like upgraded pistols, or even a classic sometimes. And the other half of the team will have specters, or some upgraded gun. Specter, Marshall, Stinger, whatever. So that mm -hmm. there's a path to upgrade for those who don't have guns, and then for those who do have guns, they can like abuse their gun power. Mm -hmm. And then like your team like stays relatively frugal so that into third round or for fourth round you may might even be able to buy in third round fourth round you can like continue buying you know if you lost third round etc yeah but definitely because you're choosing to have a specter instead of uh running with your, your deagle you should give your deagle to one of your teammates who just bought a pistol so okay. always always think about like your team's economy like what can i do to help my team's economy if people are buying guns that aren't needed, then let me give them a gun or something. One thing I'll say is that your minimap is like really small. I think you, I think you should just like keep your minimap minimap at full size and then um, keep it centered so that let's say like you're you're over here, right? Just like a lot of wasted space on the minimap. Like, okay, let me start drawing, actually. Let's do... To exemplify all this wasted space. So, like, here's the actual useful space. And then all this is, like, wasted space. Right, can you see that? What I'm drawing? Yep. So, I think if you just zoom in your minimap to the edge, and then keep yourself, um, uh, not really centered, but like keep the keep the map centered. Yeah, and I think you'll you'll see more information because it seems like you're you're zooming in. Not, not really zooming. You're zooming out so that you can always see the edge of the map. But in doing so, you also you shrink the map to be really small out of the whole yeah. possible map. Okay. Let's go back to C.
Okay, let me pause here and see what's going on to your mind here. Uh, we don't have anyone directly on B site, and Ray's is in garage, and Sage is hovering in between C and garage. Okay. So I I turn around and I go towards B. Okay. Okay, that's fine. One thing I'll say is that generally you want to buy all utility, almost every round. Here you're signing the round with just a flash. Got one B, or C, 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 sir. Okay. I'll buy. Got one C. B, or C, 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 sir. He says one okay. B, or C, they see two, three, four, you see four I'll people buy. in the minimap. I'll see, I'll see, I'll see. They're all C. Okay, and then he'll call five, I like this, you're running for knife. I don't like this, and then you're running for Spectre, he's not useful. You need to run for it as fast as possible. Yeah. Here you see your, your Sage is already like, well, not really holding the angle, but she's like, she's more likely to make first contact. This wall is ass, yeah. I don't know what I did here. Yeah. I like this, you're peeking too early, you're with your team. Enemy spotted C. Enemy Pick up the Sage. A little bit late. Pick the sage. <laughs> good job, guys. Oh, this game was... oh my god. Not a big deal because it was just second round and they just had pistols, but things could have ended poorly. I'm not tired. There were situations where you had an isolated army one and situations where the sage had an isolated army one. And if the enemy team played it correctly, then those would be two free kills into gun upgrades. Yeah. Here we brought a vandal, we dropped the spectre, we should ping it, tell your team, hey, I dropped the spectre, give it to somebody. Because you need to think about, again, economy, economy, economy. Make sure your team can always have guns available. You also want to make sure you buy your full utility again. You still only have one flash. The dog can kind of far away. What I would like to see is like you get closer to the B like entrance and then you dog so that you your dog has like more time to to, to scout. You uh -huh. got although, me. although technically I guess you uh, you're a little bit late so I guess it's okay-ish. So you see people, so at least two we're playing really safe, but now we don't have any, don't have any more flashes, so like we really careful about taking engagement here. Yeah, just be really careful with your engagements. Let's go this really slowly. So we're picking bottom in. Okay, this is fine. You see someone? Okay. okay so yeah, I got I got swung because they tunneled on stage. Okay, makes sense. Just backed off. Team carries us. You should ask for a drop because oh, your viper has a million dollars. Same thing with your raise. You say you should also ask for a drop. Bro, that sucks. Always think, try to, what can I do to even the economy? Clearly not that. You see, what do we have about a vandal? We bought light. But we can ask, easily just ask the Viper or Ray, like, hey, can you guys drop me? And you get full shields, and you get full utility. So, this is becoming a big issue. One. I do. I pull you to the other one. Alright, come on. Always think about peeking economy. Okay, for peeking this, you don't want to peek this. Wait for someone else to make close contact here, like you, what was it, your dogs? You saw one, two, three, at least three people, possibly four. Alright, come on. Let's see, did you come? You said something, okay. I'm assuming right, you come. Yeah, I don't know why OBS won't pick up my That's mic. okay. I'll just assume you made the right comm, okay? Yeah. But in this situation, you just have to hold you the side. You got me. You don't want to actually peek, peek yeah, into... Yeah, I don't want to peek until yeah. Reyna goes You peek twice it. into three people. Now, this third peek makes sense, because you, now your Reyna has been your attention, but the initial peeks here is extremely uh, risky. Because uh, I, I take damage. Yeah, you basically should have just died. You should have just died right here. You peek in three people, you should just die instantly. You pick yeah. three people again. Well, okay, this one's the second one's a little bit more of a jiggle. Okay, a little bit safer. And then, okay, now the third pick that really should have be, been dead already. 
now this fourth peak is makes sense because now the Reyna is making contact. Oh, yeah, I have Reyna with me to right. Then you can swing together. You probably could have stayed and finished that kill, but it's okay. Now you gotta pick with the sage. Don't let the sage go alone. Thank you. That wall right. looks like it has a gap. That wall definitely has a gap. What I would do here is verify that there's no gap in the wall and rotate around. Okay. Okay, never mind. So Rena just breaks the hole in the gap, forces the 1v1 for no reason, dies. One enemy remaining. Nice. Knife out with the guns. Thanks. <clears throat> Let's see, let's see the team, enemy team's economy. Looks like they can all buy. Okay, except for Sage. So we should expect them to buy. Maybe they might have, might not be a full buy with utility. Let's see the our team's economy. Let's see what we got. Okay, everyone's bots. Nobody's about the max. Good. Seems like we're just like, okay, let's, let's pause here. What, what's going through your head here? What are you thinking? Uh, I don't really know where to go, because everyone is on a site. I could go a short, but I'm not sure. Okay, let me ask you this. Where do you think the enemy is going to go this round? Um... Could... Probably A, because they haven't really pushed it. Okay. Now, knowing that, where do you want to play? What do you want to do this round, I should say? Probably go A short. Because okay. Viper is on long. Okay. Or Heaven. Okay. Let me present to you another option. If you know for sure, or you have a good read that they're not... They're going to go A, they're not going to go B or C. Then what you could do as an alternative to stacking A site, is that you could stack B site or stack C site. And then play aggressively, as opposed to if you were to stack A, most likely you have to play passively because they're, they're gonna push into you. Yeah. So, if you want to go with this alternative gamble, you can like play C, stack C, and then play aggressively. So, like for example, you'll at the beginning of the round you send a dog, or you or you send one of your your birds a, fl a flashbang into C long to see if there's anybody there, get information if anyone's there. If there is someone there, then okay, then you go back to playing passive, or you change your game plan, or whatever. But if there is nobody at C long, then you push up C long. Okay. And then while you're pushing up C long, whether you do it fast, like you sprint, or you do it slow, which is safer, like a walk, then you can let your team know, like, hey, there's nobody C. Rotate out of C, out out of garage, whatever. Rotate to B, rotate to A, etc. And then while you're Pushing C, you can continue pushing C, push into the T spawn until you finally like hear somebody. Or if you don't hear anything, then you just keep pushing, keep pushing until until you do hear something. Or you have like some notion that there's an enemy nearby. Okay. Yeah. So like as an as an initiator, right, you have like really strong tools to get information. Like using your dog, using your your bird to get information. If there's if you have information that no one's there, then it's safe to look. Or generally safe to look. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And break it. <clears throat> it's an not, A push. Not C. All right, criminal. I'll rotate behind. Here I would rotate through B because it's faster. And you also have you had Reina at the beginning here. Reina's already watching it's the entrance. Not so unless someone is like bottom mid, right, then right. running through B side is, is perfectly fine. Yeah. The Viper needs to back off. She's playing really aggressive to sewers. Now she can play contact yeah, with off Reina. Don't need don't need healing right now. You need to trade your Viper. Put off Urena, put off Urena, Urena's peeking. Damn it. There's no point in walking, you already showed yourself CT. Good shot. 
I'll say here this round. Yeah, I'm playing. Really yeah, I think like... I think I just blunder. Yeah, it just seemed like you didn't know, really know what to do. So here we see like Viper is getting pressured. She's stuck in a corner now. We have Rainer to back her up. Okay, fine. Yeah, I'm flanking behind them. But now Rainer's backing off, and she's at full health. There's no point in whipping out your heal. There's a flashbang going off in Viper's face, so she needs like help ASAP. We're like we're not healing anything. You know, so heal healing bar is at 100. Now Viper is dead, and now we're too late to trade. So like these like couple of seconds makes a huge deal whether someone lives or dies. We can possibly trade the sage. We missed. Okay, that's fine. But now there's Rain is peeking, so we need to peek ACP. We're walking up heaven, which is like kind of pointless. As soon as you peek that sage, peek the sage, you you're showing on the enemy minimap already. They know where you are. They know your CT. Yeah. So this walking doesn't accomplish anything. Because they already know there, so I should just be being faster. You should be faster. See, the Vayner is peeking again. Okay. We just happened to miss those shots, but timing is an issue. Okay, very standard play. Just dog to mid. We get information that nobody's here. We should. Let's pause. What are you thinking? Uh, we saw Killjoy turret and spawn, so they're watching for a flank. So I probably shouldn't push for a flank. Okay, let's spawn. Go back and see where's the turret exactly. Turret is okay outside the lobby, and then we spot the Reyna in lobby. So they have a turret for flank, but yeah. unless someone is playing off that turret and like camping spawn with it. To me, when I see a turret like that, it just means like they're probably all stacked A and they put a turret there to watch flank. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, like, why would Kyoja put a turret there? She would put it somewhere else. Yeah. So you still have the option of flanking. So you can still flank, destroy the turrets, but then just like back off because now the turret is like their source of uh, like flank control. As soon as you block the turret, now someone has to, like the Kyoja, for example, has to sit back and watch flank. So that automatically puts pressure on the enemy team. Okay. So yeah, one option, you can flank, break the turret, and then run away and go to, go reposition somewhere else. Alright. The other option is, you have a general idea, or at least I would, I would expect them to be all A. I would push to your garage, break the turret, and go see long. And then that tells your team exactly where everyone is. That tells you right now, hey, you can, you can drop off C, because C is completely clear. Sage can like you can tell Sage, hey, push up B mid or something, camp mid or rotate to A, whatever, because like most of B, most and all of C's is completely clear. And you can also cut off rotation as well, making this play like this. Because it's about info. It's about info, yes. So you're denying info from the enemy team by destroying the turret. They don't know if you're in C spawn. They don't know if you rotated somewhere else. And then. Secondly, you're also gaining a lot of info, info by positioning yourself into T spawn or or into like C long getting away, but then T spawn, you know exactly what enemy is gonna be. Unless they like full walk everywhere. Okay. So minor things so far. One, look more. Two, gain information slash deny information. Okay. So we see two, we see three people. Eight, they're coming A long. There's no point walking. We see four people. Four person just dies. So there's three people A long. Still three people at A. Lost control of A. Rain is 114. She wants that. Hold on, hold on. I'm a walk. So I'm a walk. Wait for someone to peek, unless you want flash outs. I'm not sure if I agree with this wall, but I guess it's fine. Gotta help you sage, gotta help you sage. Sage, you're right. Okay, let's pick this down very slowly. So, here Sage is like kind of baiting herself, like going graffiti. She's gonna make first contact at anybody pushing out along. As, as soon as that happens, when she makes contact, we wanna swing. Right now, we're in okay. cover. We're playing off contact of our sage, which is great. We just wanna make sure that 
when Sage is shooting at someone and, sh and someone is shooting at Sage, we swing out. We, yeah, we swing out and support yeah, our and, Sage. Right, and we turn that into a 2v1. Alternatively, what we can do to make it even safer is that because we have a wall to our left, we can flash over the wall and that will be safe from our Sage and safe from our arena. So we won't blind anybody except the enemy team. And then we can swing yeah. out and then like get a bunch of easy kills very easily. Okay. So I, I feel one. like I struggle with using my flashes as any character. Okay. But just kind of think about like when you can use a flash that will almost guarantee to blind an enemy while at the same time not blinding your teammates. Okay. So using this wall, using the geometry of this wall would be a great example. You just flash over it. And based on where your teammates are positioned, always think about where your teammates are positioned and what they're looking at. Based on those two things, you can easily, you know, you can deduce that you can easily flash over this wall and not, not blind any of your teammates. You can only blind the enemy. Okay, that, that makes sense. Okay. Uh, and by the way, like, um, um, I'm uh, sorry for Mike earlier. I'm here now, though. Okay. I hope you don't mind if I watch. Yeah, no problem. Right, so we're making contact with this Reyna, we get the kill, great. This reel, reload, I don't like it because we know that there's enemies on side already and Sage is in a gunfight. At any like half second, less than even less than a half second, we'll, we'll probably want to re-enter the fight as soon as possible. Yeah. Like right now, like right now, like right now someone is playing on our Sage. Like, our, our priority is I not to heal her. Yeah. yeah, our priority is not to heal her, our, our priority is to trade her out because she's like, yeah. Already in a gunfight. She, she's gonna probably die. Yeah, so the healing is also not useful while take, someone is taking damage because your heal you, is just not gonna work. They don't actually get healed even though your resource is draining because they have to not take damage for at least two seconds before they can start to receive healing. Ah. Oh. Stay to your right. Okay, so yeah, keep your gun out. We don't want to play this angle. I mean, you can hold it really tightly like this. I guess this is okay, but you, you want to have your Sage make first contact. Okay, let's, uh, okay. let's discuss this. How to trade someone out. Okay, can you see this? Yes. Okay, so we are, let's say we have like a wall here, and we're standing here, and then... Um, Wall here, and then where our sky here, or yeah, I guess S, and then our sage, and I'll call it A, is here playing graffiti, and we have a chamber swinging out from sewers, right? So yeah, based on the angles right now, if we take this Vomi one between us and chamber, our sage can't help us because what our, the sage's point of view is like this to that, or or better yet, like so. So if chamber continues to completely swing out, then you'll be in direct view. This is Sage's like line of sight here. Yeah. Right, you see this triangle? Unless Chamber like steps in into here, he's not going to be in a 2v1. Mm -hmm. So by you forcing this fight, even accidentally, this is a 1v1. And that's not what we want. We want this to be a 2v1. So instead, we should abuse this wall just hide behind the wall, wait for our sage to make contact with somebody. Uh, and then support sage. And then support the sage. So this is her line of sight. After chamber decides to push into here, or push into here, into this triangle, then we swing out. And then we turn this, we force this to become a 2v1. Okay. So basically playing contact off your sage. And then within let, it has to happen like as fast as possible. As soon as Sage makes contact with somebody, she's in a gunfight, we want to swing out as fast as possible. If we're late by even like one second, the, the fight could have been already decided, Sage could be dead, the other person could have retreated, whatever. And our, our trade kill could, could be denied. Okay. Okay, so major issue is play contact off of teammates. All right, back to VLC. Let's, have, let's see how we take this uh, engagement here. 
Okay, perfect. Even though okay. you picked the chamber first, he decided he to come rescue you. He should have seen me in. Yeah, he should have just yeah, took he, this one. He should have just shot at me. Right. Instead, he kind of swung past you. Then he fought the sage, and then you swung out, which is perfect. Exactly what you want. Nice. Even though he kind of gave you that. Okay, last guy is unknown. Two, 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 two things I need to ask about. Yep. Like, um, when, when you're taking the when you're like I'm taking contact, like do, do you like um swing off of the first the enemy's first bullet, or do you swing off of like their death? Off the first bullet. Okay. Also, like, um, oh, oh. what was your opinion on the gun swap to the vandal right there? Like, do you think you should she should have held onto the specter because like last one unknown or? Let me let me preface the first question. So generally, you want to swing off the first bullet, but there are like rare situations where the enemy will kind of bait you because they they shoot at nothing, even though like they baited you to to peek them because you think that they're in engagement. So usually, the first bullet at your teammate is a sign that yes, they are in engagement, but sometimes they just they just shoot at nothing just to like bait someone to peek. Okay, and then uh, what was your second question? Sorry. Um, my second question was like, um, in the middle of that sky swap to like, like to the uh, from the specter to the vandal, like, um, what was your opinion on that? Like, since the last one's unknown, like, I, I might have not gone for the weapon switch. Do you think that was safe? That's a good question. I think it depends on your teammates. So as long you're generally vulnerable while you're dropping guns, right, and you're swapping to whatever, and you're reloading, but. As long as your teammate can cover you, or like you're next to your teammate, he, can, he or she can cover you while you're doing your thing, taking a few seconds to get your gun upgrade and reload, whatever, then it's fine. Alternatively, if you want to be absolutely safe, I would just spend some utility, because you have two flashes, you can just like flash short or flash long, or whatever, to get some information about where the last enemy is. So, let's go right. to that. Trap the chamber, great. Last guy's unknown. I would not reload here because the last you don't know where the last person is. The last person could could also swing out of that, that chamber and take contact off him. Nice. So here it's relatively relatively safe. The only thing we have to worry about is that that last person could peek us long. Because this split second here. Nice. Our sage is peeking series for us. The only only area we have to be worried about is long. But the, wi the, the window to punish is like really short, so it's not a huge deal. This whole time you're, you're basically hugging your sage, so it's not a huge deal. Thank you. I don't know why I'm playing so good right now, it's my first game on. Oh, I'm like- I'm I'll pause here, any, any more questions? I don't know how many things to say. Okay. Pause back. Please, I can I like this, you're pressing time so you can see what the guns are, what the economy is. Let's see, the enemy economy is kind of broke, except for the chamber. The chamber has alts, jet has knives, so they could make an eco play with uh, jet knives, chamber alts. And they could also make some sort of A or B push with uh, good joy alt as well. And I'm surprised the enemy has not used it. A push. Okay, we see two people long. Also, never make a call out like that Rainer did. A push. He just says A push. But what does that mean? One A, two, three, four, five. We just know A. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, now we know it's two A long. Now your your sage makes a riskier play by pushing C long completely, and you've dog be mid as well. So now you know like it's, bas it's most likely all five or A right now because Sage is check is has played out C long, you've dogged and have not heard anything be mid. Push. So we wanna run, we wanna support Arena as fast as possible. This is what we're gonna do, we're gonna play A, we're gonna support Arena. Right now Arena is a is pretty close to taking an engagement. She's flashing, she's about to take an engagement. And now we want to back out. We stuck going on for too long. We want to peek here while well, we're double peeking with Arena. Great, perfect, great timing, great timing. Now Reyna has left the line of sight. Now we need to leave line of sight. And my VLC is kind of frozen. 
Okay, let me close this dumb VLC. Yeah, I get a different um, video client. <laughs> okay, let me go back to sharing. This is a pair of rounds. Go back to 855. Push. Okay, let's also keep note of what guns they have. So, chain move bots. So now the enemy team has two guns, at least. And I saw two question marks earlier on the map. And Long. Yeah. They were so that long. was too long. Yep. But what I want to focus on is like this peak here because it's really important. Like, yeah. Generally, you want to avoid 1v1s unless like you're advantaged or you're really confident that you can win it. And we want to force 2v1s as much as possible or force 3 v like force unfair fights. So here, this is a good peak because we're peaking with Arena. As soon as Arena leaves, we also need to leave. Because what's going to happen? We now we're forced to take a one with, with enemy mana, which we generally do not want. Spike down a. And we take another one with the jet. I mean, you get these kills, but you could really, really easily be dead. And now Arena peaks without us. You still have 17 bullets. The Arena is peaking. You need to peek with her. One enemy remaining. Uh, we're playing off our raise, our raise is clearing, clearing along. You can just flash that, I would flash that. Well, would it be any good if you to drop down and uh, drop down from there in that scenario, or do you want to keep holding from heaven? I think keep holding it from heaven because um, it's such like a really strong position that you're on high ground. You you can really easily back out if needed. You have full almost full view of the site where like. If the enemy goes anywhere, let's go back to this. If, you know what, they're in the, this cubby place. If they decide to go anywhere, then they have to run into your run, line of sight. Mm -hmm. uh, no, Ray's peaks this though, which is why I was thinking that it might be a good idea to drop down P with her. Uh, that's true. What I would do is that I would wait till Ray's is like around the corner and then flash for her. And then she can like peek safely. Okay. Okay. Or, or more ideally, if if you guys were like in a five stack and this raise wasn't this wasn't like solo queue, the best play is, is just to keep the person contained. We know the last person is, we just hide and wait until that person pushes out. As yeah, because we, we have spike. Right. The spike is down. They have to push into you guys. As soon as that person leaves that cubby, then they're gonna make contact with at least one person, then the other two people will swing out, and then one of those people will get the trade kill. Okay. Also, oh, one more word about the wallbang in the sky is that like um like I don't think you can wallbang through two of those boxes with a vandal. I think it, I think that requires an Odin. So I think even those these boxes are way too thick to wallbang through two of them. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not yeah, sure. I guess so. Yeah. But definitely a vandal is, is not going to pierce through that. Yeah. Yeah. So also on the topic of of playing contact, your sage is peaking way too early here because your sage could run me one this enemy sage right now. And then neither you nor the rays can actually trade her out. Yeah. So like this one one is happening, right? It just started. N neither of neither of us are ready right. to. Right. Yeah, trade because so, rays is not yeah. even around the corner. Right. So your sage actually took it's the fight important. too early. And then now your rays is pushing her. Rays just like just hide around the corner, wait for the sage to come into us. Right, so like your ra your raise also peaks in, but what if the sage just just stayed in the corner? Well, then that's another one we want being granted to enemy yeah. sage. And at that point, I either flash or I drop Good down. I would say uh, because they would. Let's see, the last enemy. time you made contact with somebody right. was when you killed the chamber, or was chamber killed someone else? Okay, so the last time you made contact with somebody was a really long time ago. Yeah. It was like even before this. Or the jet, I think. Yeah, just the jet. The jet and arena. This is like 107. This is like so long ago. Enemy remaining. Okay. So either you can just like hide because they haven't seen you at heaven, or you can like uh, rotate out to go, go CT spawn, or you can try to bait like throw a flash out of heaven, then go CT spawn, or something like that. Basically, just like play the bomb at that point. He's in corner. 
Like around here. Sage dies. We'll just imagine that Raze also dies. We'll imagine that the... Uh, what if the Sage dies? We'll imagine that the enemy Sage stays in the corner, then Raze pushes her, and then Raze also dies. Now it's a 1v1. Now in this situation, I would just play bomb. Yeah, because I, I have bomb. Yeah. And if she ever pushes out, then I have an angle on her. The easiest option would, would just be stay heaven, because they're probably not going to expect you to from heaven, because that information that they got from you was like so stale, like over 10 seconds ago. And from heaven, you have a clear view of the bomb. So if she does go for the bomb, she's like completely exposed to heaven the entire time. Okay. He's in corner. Okay, any more questions, by the way? Uh, no. <clears throat> right. Although I'm really surprised the enemy team did not use any ults. Especially yeah, on the no, they have all. So let's see what money Both they have. have all. <clears throat> now they all have money except the Reyna. So now I'm not really sure if they're gonna ult or not. Um, see the chamber well, one comment I have is like, I think yeah. that I think that you don't have to hide behind that box for that dog right there because no. like. But, but, but like I think you want you can get a little bit of extra range out of your dog by simply sitting around the corner. Yeah. Yeah, because like um they can't run up long that fast, so yeah. I'm pretty sure that's. Yeah, that is true. Also, like um, is it like I I think that sky is like really strong on A because like that dog <laughs> can easily to clear out short, which is a lot more annoying to clear than long. Oh yeah. Oh no, and th that's kind of my own preference. When I play sky on this map, I really like playing A. I don't really like playing C long that much. Those kinds of long angles because yeah, like, your dog long has limited not... vision. Like, like I, I think you, I think that your dog would be better for like garage or like a short or something. So that's where I'd probably pay. Yeah, for I completely guy. agree. Yeah, it just depends how you want to play it. I think initiators are generally pretty strong on sped up maps like this, where you want to gain information as safely as possible. And Sky has three pieces of utility plus an alt to do that. Yeah. Yeah. So it just depends like how you want to play. It. I think she's strong almost anywhere in this map except maybe B. Even B is kind of playable, it's probably fine. Yeah, B is kind of playable. Right. Also, like, um, well, like, how strong is the flash if you flash behind you with, with Sky? Like, like, let's say you, like, you, got, you flash behind your teammate to support them. <laughs> like, um, how, how long will that last for the, for the teammate? If you flash your teammate? Flash behind them. Yeah, behind them. Oh, just as, the same amount of time you, if you were to flash behind the enemy, right? So, like, less than a second. They're like the enemy that was looking at them when we get flash longer. Okay. Yeah, so the full flash, I think, is like two seconds, or at least two seconds. If you get flash behind you, then it's less than a second. I'm not sure on the exact value, so don't copy on that, but it is much shorter than eating a full flash. Alright, any more questions? No. Uh, let's go back to the beginning. One thing you can do, this is kind of a min-max thing, is that most of the time, the enemy will, will kind of give away their position for free. So you don't necessarily have to dog immediately. Or you can yeah. just like wait here for, I don't know, two or three seconds and just and listen, listen. To, yeah, listen to see if they, they stomp around C. If they do stomp, then there's no need to dog unless you want to like count exactly how many people are C. So just a min-max thing if you wanted to save some utility. <clears throat> Alright, so we see two people. Chamber has a Spectre. Alright, I'll flank behind, I'll flank behind. I'm assuming you called it out. Okay, so our Sage has pushed all the way through B. Our Viper should get out of A. Ray's pushed a little bit too hard. Sage gets killed, great. See, let's go back to timing about Arena. Arena put out a flash. We want to peek with that flash. Get ready for Arena to peek long. She's peeking long right now. We want to peek long with her. But we're too busy looking at our little squid thingy. Rain is 80. Thank you. Probably don't take that bummy one. Yeah. I have no reason to take Arena already died. Say again? I have no reason to take it. Yeah. This is a good old. The, the ult? Uh, yeah. I think if I'm not uh, paying attention, this is literal. I, I, don't, I don't know. 
I think the ult is okay, although you could probably get more value out of it, or even just save it. I could probably, yeah, save it for later, <clears throat> for when my Sage, if she manages to kill Reyna. Yeah, so two things you want to do with your ult is either, one, you want to push with your ult, or peek with your ult, or two, you want to ult to get, like, maximum information. Whereas, yeah. like, a dog or a flash, you're, you're flashing a specific area, you're dying a specific area, whatever, but ult can, like, travel, like, all the way through the map, or almost through the entire map. Yeah. So, in this situation, you know where the enemy is, so it doesn't seem like you're ulting specifically for information, so then, therefore, you should push with the with your ult, and let your ult make first contact, and then you swing off of it. Although, even okay. then, it's kind of iffy, because, like, you know where the enemy is, you could probably win the round just by keeping them contained. Okay. Okay. Is 80. Thank you. But here, we're not really able to swing off our ults because Jet is just hiding on the corner unless we also push up to this corner and then immediately swing after our ult makes contact. We're not really going to like be able to kill a Jet off, off our ults. Right, so while she's hiding. So now we have to think about do I stay committed to this angle or do I play a more passive angle, which is by a lot safer, or do I disengage? Um, not Which option sure. would you pick? What, what was the question? You have three options. One is you commit to holding this angle. Second option is you hold this angle, but you play it in a non-committed way. And the third option is you give up this angle entirely. And either you place, you rotate somewhere else, or you play reposition around the site or something. I honestly would just abandon it, because I don't know where Chamber, Killjoy, or Sage are, and we have Bomb. Okay, so then you just rotate the Bomb. Yeah. Okay, I think that's probably the safest option. That's probably the best option. No, I wouldn't say best. I would say it's one of the good, the better options. Here, you, you right Ready after baby. this Thank ult you. makes contact, we're still like really exposed, right? This is like a fully committed angle. Yeah, it's bad. If Jet were to swing us, or even worse, if someone were to peek from our left side, from like um, the T spawn part of, of Silong, like not where your crosshair is, right? But to the left. Yeah. Then we would just like kind of die immediately, unless we flip to them. And then Jet swings us, now we're committed to this 1v1, and generally we don't want to be committed, we want to have an escape route. Yeah. So either you hold this angle really tightly, or you reposition, let's say you were to play platform, for example. Sure, let's go back to. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's go to the drawing board to talk about angles. Okay, so now we're on C long. Where we're C rather, we're I don't know, somewhere like here. And then the let's say we're, we're S. And then the jet is here. And then we're looking at this, but we're also exposed to all of this. So if jet swings anywhere into this line of sight, then we become committed. So okay. to remedy to this, either you hold it really tightly so that you're like here, and you can only see this sliver, right? Mm -hmm. You can only see like this much. And if she runs past you, then she runs past you. But if she peeks you, then this is like much more, much less committed. Where like you can take a couple shots and you you and break, back out. you back out, right? You you close close the angle. Alternatively, is that you can reposition because the whole point of, of you even being in C in the first place is just to make sure that the jet doesn't push into C, the jet doesn't push into garage, whatever. Right now, we're just trying to yep. keep them contained. We know that uh, they're in C lobby or C outside C long in C lobby, or somebody pushed into window already, and then there's like maybe some fight happening over here. We know that the enemy is like in this general location. The rest of the map is clear. So yeah. in terms of map control, we just want to keep the enemy contained here. So we don't necessarily have to like stay in this angle here, but we can also, let's say for example, if we were to play platform, and then we hold another really tight angle like this. So that if Jet decides to run back to your team, she runs into our crosshair. If the, set, if the Jet decides to push up C along, she runs into our crosshair. But we also 
have a very non-committed angle where like if we need to we can just fuck this corner okay so i would just go behind in the corner yeah so options is to play in a non-committed way keep them contained at c or as you mentioned originally give up c completely and just regroup to with your team because bomb was down somewhere over here yeah spike was like dropped over here And then just just cover the bomb. <clears throat> oh, oh, by the way, like um, can you can you go back to the clip? This would be a rather aggro thing to do. But what do you like um, is, like her ult actually ended up making contact with someone in the cubby. So what do you think of hugging the other wall, like killing the guy in the cubby, and just and just like peeking with the sage and jet? Let's see. Let's it's see what the ult makes contact right, with. Oh, you're right. It does make contact with someone in the cubby. That makes it even riskier to play the same role. Yeah. I think it's. Yeah, I think it would just be better to. Yeah. Because it, I see it go in the cubby. I think I should just go into the other wall. So to answer your question about to, about pushing up, I think it's extremely risky because if even if you were to push up, you kill that guy, the jet would just swing out and kill you and get the trade. Yeah. You'll be too far away to like retreat back, and then now you're committed to. Uh, 2v1s or where is a 2v1? That's fair. So like, how do you help you, How do you help your Sage in this position? Because Sage is going to ego peek this. You just rotate out, just leave C and then go through garage into into mid. Do, do you guys still have, have garage control? Oh. Uh, we did to some extent. I don't, I don't think anybody has shown themselves garage. At all to the round, I think. So let's see, we dog this. Where? Reina Eagle Peaks, Rage is pushing through mid, so at this point, like, Garage is like implicitly clear because your Sage is pushing through mid, and your Rage is also pushing through mid outside of Garage. So if someone was Garage, they would have made contact with, with uh, Rage already. True. <clears throat> in, in fact, Reina does right now, that's a good point. Reina's 80. Yeah, okay. Reina, and Reina gets traded out by Sage, so that's fine. Last player standing. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, I think best but best option would just be rotate out. Or alternative option yeah. would be um, keep control of C but don't be so committed. Last player standing. So, minor issue, try not to commit to gunfights slash angles if you don't have to. <clears throat> I don't like that you have a specter when you can yeah. just fall by. And now you have a pistol. <laughs> okay, let me ask you, what's going through your head here? Uh, none of my team has economy after this round. Okay. If we lose. Okay. Is that a bad thing? But I think I should. I think I should just still fall by, because I have more economy. Okay. Yeah, I would say, generally speaking, you want to buy your team. Because yeah. if you just have a pistol, you become a liability because, let's say you're holding A by yourself, you only have a pistol, you're more likely to just die or lose control of the site compared to yeah. your team. And then, okay, so number two is that when you find yourself like underkitted compared to your team, or even if you are kitted, but fully kitted, but members of your other team, your teammates aren't. Like if you have the 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 Phantom of Vando, but they have a Spectre, you want to provide a path for upgrades for your team. Whether it's like you die in a safe position, like let's say you you have a Phantom, you're playing a Heaven, and you ego pick someone, fine, whatever, you die, whatever. But at least if your team rotates to A, like it's very easy to just rotate to A, and you, like Heaven control is like almost almost always under your your team's control so your team can like what to tell your team hey i dropped the phantom in, in a heaven so we can co come grab it and then that becomes a path for your team to get your gun upgrade okay alternatively if you decide to play aggressive try to play aggressive in, in places where if you get the kill then a teammate can 
can rotate over and get the gun relatively safely. So one example where it wouldn't be safe to, to do that would be like if you were, let's say you're playing C and you go peek someone at C long and then you get the kill, but just because you get the kill does not mean that you have control of C long. Right? Yeah. So like unless like that person was alone, then most likely the enemy team would just like rotate over, pick up the gun, then leave or something, as opposed to that gun going to your teammates. Mm hmm Another example, let's say it's uh it's Haven attack, but uh, you're pushing A, A long. So on attack, on A long, if you were to get the kill, then most likely you have control of A long, then you can like give that, that gun that you well, the person you just killed to give that gun to your teammate. Yeah. Alright. So that's what to do if you have the gun, but if you don't have the gun, then a couple of different options that you act as baits for your your teammates with the gun. So for example, well, it's probably not something you're gonna do on defense, but let's say if you were on attack, then you would swing out because you have a pistol, you just want to act as baits. Double, double peek with someone who does have a gun, like your Reyna has a Phantom or your Raze has a has a Vandal. Double peek with them and let the let the the guy with the gun like get the kill or get the trade. As you just like you just focus on your mobility, just focus on staying alive for at least two seconds or whatever, so that they can like get the easy kill. Yeah. Alternatively, again, all this is like fundamental. Just like playing off your teammates, playing off your teammates. What can I do to help my teammates? What can my teammates do to help me? What can I do to peek with my teammates, or trade off my teammates, or or get gun upgrades to them, or get gun upgrades to me? So a way to get gun upgrades to you is that whenever your your say your Reno, your Raze, or if, whenever your team gets a kill, one of your goals is to as fast as possible like get to that location, assuming that 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 or like help secure that piece of the map, like keep it on your team's control, so that you can get the gun upgrade yep. and become useful. Because right now you're not really useful as a... Yeah, as a yeah I have nothing. You can't really do much except, like, be bait. Yeah, and all I have is just my flash as a util. Yeah. I'm basically just a util bot. That's, yeah, that's another way to think think about it. So instead of, like, you swinging out, maybe you just dog for your team and let your team play off the flash or play off the dog. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, these are all the options to consider. Let's, let's see how you play it. Oh, oh, that was terrifying. <clears throat> Definitely, we don't want to be in CT spawn. We're too passive here. We want to knife you. out, run to somewhere. So, like, all these engagements are already happening on the map. Like, this raise could die at any time. Oh, oh. Yeah, because she's uh, yeah. slow. No, yeah. you're not. She's, she's in an engagement. As soon as like someone is making contact here, Raze is making contact, and pretty soon Sage is gonna like double peek with her. Hopefully, no, like, she's hiding. She shouldn't be hiding. But this Raze is making making contact. She's fighting one v two, one v one, whatever. I would expect that either she dies or the enemy is gonna die, and I want to be there as fast as possible to play off of that. Yes. If our Raze dies, I pick up the gun ACP before the enemy pushes it to B, and then they have control of B and they have the gun. Or if Raze gets the kill in the guy in window, I want to see if I can get control of window as fast as possible, if it's possible, so that I can get that gun in window. That was terrifying. But yeah. by you, like sitting in CT spawn, this is like too far away to, to really do anything. Now a Raze is making contact, and that's like across the map right now. I got you. Uh, pause real quick. Yep. Um, no, like assume that like Sky did follow up on, on Raze's peak in the mid, and like Raze lost that, and it's and Sky's turn to trade. It's like, um, would you crouch for that fight? Because I find the classic to be rather inconsistent if I'm just standing up. Generally, wouldn't like, crouch. From there to mid window is pretty far. So, yeah. but I know crouching gets you too committed to the fight. Right. Generally, you don't want to be committed, unless you're really confident that, like, maybe you, you saw the rays, take the enemy, and like, okay, I can just land a body shot. I'll get the kill. Then, okay, then commit to it. But generally, you don't want to commit, especially if you just have a classic. Yeah. Like, um, unless you're at an angle where it's a direct headshot that you can't miss, then I don't think you should ever commit. Yeah. Alright, any more questions? Um... Uh, no more? Yeah. Not for me. Alright. Easy.
So let's see how many people we've seen. We've seen two people be window. We saw one person in the lobby. We ran a kills. We saw another person in the lobby. So that's three people. Three out of four right now. Easy. Only person I know is Killjoy. She's most likely watching Flank, but we don't know. Nice kill. Oh, we didn't pick a we didn't check out corners. Yeah. Well, otherwise, that was a pretty good kill because, like, we saw you. that your vase was pushing B window. Well, she's in B cover right now. She almost about to peek window, but she's being a lot of attention. Like, she's in a super extended fight somehow and didn't die. She's oh, fighting the oh, funny oh, mid, funny mid, funny mid, and your sage is like super useless, which is unfortunate. She even walls out your vase, which is unfortunate. I got you. It's kind of a kind of a throw play, honestly. But okay, they're, they're super focused on raids because they know that she's in in the cubby. So this is a, a great time to peek out. You got the free kill. Awesome. You just happen to not get traded. It's a long round. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, let's pause here. What are you I should I should be buying. Yeah, I, I should have five thousand. Minishu, buy the team. Another issue. Full buy if you have the funds. Have the funds to buy. Unless you have a uh, specific reason. Or also, one comment that I have is like typically I don't like using my dog off start because it's non rechargeable and like it's super great for taking back lost territory. Yeah. So what, I, what I'd probably do is I'd flash out garage for info and like, um, you know, like, like, and save your dog to retake his spot like that you think they might have left. Yeah. Just a comment. Yeah, yeah, I think that could be just a situational thing. Okay, so. I paused here. What are you? What's going on through your head this month or this this instant? Uh, Reina doesn't hasn't really moved. I don't. I'm not sure what my team has this round. Um, Reina just has a classic and spawn. Oh, they're buying specters, and Reyes has I think a bramble. Okay. Let's see if we look at our teammates. We have a ghost uh, and a yeah, it's it's a weird round because some of them have eco. I mean, you have five k. You could have dropped someone. You could have dropped. Yeah, your I sage. could. I could have dropped. Could have dropped your Pro Yeah, I probably should have dropped my sage, honestly. But here, yeah, like, looks like you're bringing your dog. Are you are you gonna dog something? Are you gonna go somewhere? Like, what is your plan this round? For the next five ten um, seconds, what are you gonna do? Dog, see you long. <clears throat> Why? Why dog too long? Uh, just to try and give my team something to go with. Okay. Makes sense. I was thinking more flash mid because like there's no one there at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. So you do have a lot of options. Well, what it seems like like your sage and your rage's body damage because they're hugging the the wall so, so as soon as possible. It looks like they're they're basically gonna hold W. So. Either we want to support our team with dog, yeah, dog makes sense. You can also do flash, that also works as well. But this is a little bit far away because this block, this box in front of us is gonna- Yeah, it's, it's gonna get yeah. in the way. It's gonna block like at least three seconds or whatever. And then your sage and your razor have to wait for your dog. Alternatively, like uh, Cognizor said, you can like rotate to mid and like hold mid. But uh, yeah. there's some, I guess like some mind games that you can play where like, um, if you take the gamble that nobody is going to push mid or nobody's going to push garage, then you can leave it lightly defended while you push somewhere else. Yeah. So, unless they, they full sign it to be, if they like take their time to to slowly work up mid, by the time that happens, by the time they actually get to B, you're probably going to be in T-spawn. Or you, yeah. the Sage and the Rays are going to be in T-spawn. Or... More likely, you'll already have made contact with somebody. Okay. So, yeah, I think taking these gambles is fine, just as long as you're aware of the gamble that you're making, where, like, if you stack three people C, you're just leaving B garage open for the time being, and just kind of hope that P 
people enemy just doesn't immediately push into those areas like ASAP which I think is a pretty safe bet because of the past nine rounds they have not done so so yeah right so yeah if we were playing the dog here we should not hug this corner and I end up dogging garage instead and of going with yeah. my team if we're gonna dog garage, then we should just get closer into garage. Yeah. So we can I should just more. be in garage because I'm still safe there. Ah, uh, your Viper ego peeking short. Yeah, let's see what happens on the map. So they push to C1. Completely clear. Your dog through mid. Mostly clear. Your Viper plays really committed. We see three people here. I'll rotate through B because it's faster. And also because you just cleared mid, or most of mid, so it's relatively safe to, to what you to be, so you can like save those- Also like if you for lurkers. Say again? Also like if you rotate through B, you, like you can like catch off any some lurkers or something? I don't know. The thing is you just you just dog through it already. This dog just like already peeked through most of mid. Does it cover window? I'm not sure. You saw part of it, but you didn't see the- oh, Yeah, you saw part of window, that, that, that's good enough, yeah. So unless they hide from the dog while they're in window, yeah. and then they immediately push out to the grass to be. Yeah, they're, they're pushing through short. I should just rotate through B instead of... Yeah, you'll save a few seconds. Yeah. Okay, let's pause here. What are you thinking? Uh, I'm walled off uh, from CT to site. So I go up to heaven to try and get an angle there. Okay. Okay, so then how do you plan to play the retake? Uh, try and take small peeks through the window and see if I can pick off anyone. Okay. And try and use a util if possible. Okay. So I'll say that generally for retakes, you want to take advantage of as many angles as possible. Yeah. That's kind of like rule number one, or like general rule with them. And second rule of them is that the longer that you leave sage walls up, the more value it gets over time. Yeah. So like, if I was enemy team, because the, the CT is walled, I don't even have to look at CT at all until the wall breaks. So therefore, yeah. the only place I will look at is going to be heaven. Or maybe flank. If 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 Killjoy or its chamber doesn't have the front covered. Okay. So what I'm kinda expecting, if we ignore this wall, the sage is gonna come and then she has to break the wall. Or she is yeah. either gonna break the wall or she's gonna go heaven with us. And now we're we're stacked two people in heaven. Okay. So uh, I could either I could either wait or I could go heaven and Look for angles and util. Uh, yes, but I guess the point I'm trying to drive is that you can save time save time for your team right now by breaking the wall for your sage. Yeah. Even if you decide to. They already to know I'm there. Uh, they don't necessarily know you there though. Well, they they had to heard my footsteps. Yeah, maybe they heard footsteps. That's true. But here, I would just break the wall, because either, unless you, for the retake that you plan to have your Sage and you double peek out of heaven, then breaking the wall would, would only help your team. Yeah. Okay, so let's see what happens. I'm kind of expecting the Sage to break wall eventually. And the jet spotted us. Okay, so now Sage actually ignores the wall. <laughs> Well, I guess it makes sense because she had a pistol and you had, you had the Spectre, so... Yeah. Now Arena has to break the wall. Arena's gonna waste time... Okay, she has a Spectre. That's lucky. You have jumped out with your stage there? I think you should have jumped out with your stage, yep. Get the kill is fine. And then the stage jumps out the window. I would probably either jump out with her yeah, or, jump with, or her. Peek with her. Because we still don't, we don't really know where three of them are in relation to Sight. Yeah. And this rotation doesn't really make sense, because now your Sage and Vays are already on the site, and then look, like, 
see what's happened because you didn't break the wall. Now your Reyna yeah. has wasted like five seconds, whereas your Reyna could also be on the site in the fight. And I see her on the map, but I don't do anything. Yo, you should also send out, send out your, your utility. You have two flashes. Yeah. Just flash whatever you think is reasonable. I think, That's yeah, I, th I think my biggest problem is not knowing when or how to flash. Just flash everything. Yeah. Unless you have a specific reason, like to if you they don't know you're here or you're on attack, whatever they don't know you're there, and the flash would give away your position, then okay, you can consider not flashing. But right here, after you break the wall, they know your CT spawn, so it's not like the flash is gonna give away your position. So you want to avoid like dry peeking whenever possible. You have utility okay. to help your entry. You should use it. So if you flash this, you probably could have survived. Although technically you should really play your corners first. I wasn't thinking at all. Two carries, pretty good. <laughs> what was what was this box jumping? Honestly, I was <laughs> bored. I didn't know what to do. <laughs> Yeah, well, because of that, now we wasted four to five seconds on our dog. But okay, we got the invitation that we needed. Hey, Sue, we're already long. When you Sue, we saw that there was nobody Sue long, so we could also rotate. We can, like, lurk through Sue long. I, I, oh, I, I need to start rotating through B on this map. Yeah, we tend to be way faster. Also, as a side note, there's, a, there's like, a really neat wallbang from, from like, B, from the corner of B into, into like, the sewers that's got me a few kills or at least some damage, so... Depends on, um, depends on your timing, but like, like if you catch them while they're pushing into short, you might be able to get, get some damage. Oh, okay. I think that only works if you have like Odin, right? Where's no, it does, no, like on like if you spam through the wood part, it works with the vandal. But like, yeah, but like the plaster part, you have you have to have an Odin. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. okay. I can show you it after this. Just give me your tag, and I can show you a few nice things. Let's uh do it really quickly. So like on on Haven. Let me clear. Is this clear? This is clear. On Haven through a sewers. You mean like shooting through this? Or do you mean you can shoot else? from the from the corner of B, and, you, and I like to shoot oh, at this. the doorway. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. This. Spot. So if you shoot, into, if you shoot into the middle of the doorway, and then like that's where you typically get a lot of, a lot of traffic because like people have to run through this single trip single yeah. choke. Make sure, make sure you're spamming through the wood part and not the plaster part, though, because like your bolt, bolt won't go through if it's the plaster. Okay. That's cool. Interesting, interesting tip. Alright. Alright, back to VLC. Okay, let's go back to here. We go with our gun, we start walking. Let's pause here. What are we thinking? Uh, they're gonna be coming on this site. Okay. Um, I'm not considering my Reyna not being there yet. So, I'm alone. Yeah. Which is bad. So when we're alone, what do we want to do? Uh, wait for our team. Okay. I would, I would generalize that to put, to say, you want to play safe and non-committed. So yeah. You don't necessarily have to like wait in CT spawn, right? But yeah. you could just like slow walk up and peek corners like really tightly. And then if you do spot someone, just make sure you're not committed. Just make sure you can like live until your Rana gets there. Yeah. So so kind of an like in between where like you it's a you're not, not doing anything, but you're also not just like full sending it by yourself. Just find that middle okay. ground that's like in between. Okay. So this makes sense. Just be careful, like these white, semi-wide peaks. We're walking, we're walking. Great. We have a kind of a wide angle on the left side of, of these boxes here. We close the angle and have a wide angle on, on sewers. Just be careful about that. We close the angle on our right, but now we're expanding this this angle to the left really, really widely. Player standing. Let's see who made contact first. Yeah, I would say after you shot the jet, maybe hug a corner or something. Yeah. Or, or stop walking at that point. 
you, like, you could have, like, um, like, tucked back into the corner and then flashed to get out of it. Probably, yeah. You could. I think, um, it, be it becomes risky, though. I would probably just run to your right. Let's go back to that. Sure. To escape. Because the problem with, like, if you were standing here and you hug your corner to your left, is that now you're you're fully exposed in case someone pushes out of sewers. It's true, yeah. So, and like you do have time to just simply run back instead of seeking the fight here, yeah. Yeah, and you do have to just just hold right, like instead of walking here. Let's see, last round. Why not? Love it. Yes, we should buy a pistol as well. Last oh, round, yeah. generally want to pick that pistol, especially if you have an operator. We don't have the first stage, let's just play it slow. Spike down A. Let's get bomb down. The team should rotate ACP. Rainer should try to keep eyes on bomb. Looks like he lost control of bomb already. Viper is pushing. Rainer should push a fur. They have bomb, they ran out. I think I go have them. Okay, so now we saw, let's see, what well, Viper made contact with somebody. <clears throat> so we see that the sage is a sewers. Sage is dead. We see two people in Yeah, so I think I end up going. Oh yeah, my god, one time. I I completely uh with I was not ready. Yeah. Fine, just gotta hit your shots. I think the rotation made sense because, like, playing Heaven with an op is really strong, you have long sight lines, pretty safe. Although, like, when, if I notice my rays peeking that, I, I might also peek with the op on that. The thing is that she was already committed to, like, this rotation, though. Let's go back to that. So... That is true. You, you might not have been able to have made it in time. I would uh, keep your knife out, by the way. Until you're actually gonna heal something. Because you always want to fast with your knife. Yeah. Now at this point, I would expect the team, if they were playing smart, to just hold the site, but instead they kinda like they push it along. To enable. And then we're already committed to, to waiting to heaven. Bro, oh my gosh, got one time. Well, not much I think we could have done to trade our team once we were on the exact same page. Here you bought a ghost and only a ghost. You didn't buy your other utility. Well, or you buy first round of sky. If you're intending to frag out, you buy a ghost or a pistol and other utility. Most of the time, I just buy uh, lights and you, like generally, you just always don't have utility. Like initial utility is always extremely strong. Flashes are strong. Dog is strong. But here, you like it seems like you're you're saving 300 credits for next round for some reason. Like right here, if imagine you have a dog, this sage just doesn't it, have to... It, 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 is, there, it, is there a crosshair placement a little bit high when peeking along there? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I don't I think it's fine though. I won't criticize it too much, because I'm right now I'm focusing heavily on game sense. Yeah. That of which I have known. Probably could have got the orb, but it gets Rainer plant, Rainer plant. Don't push, don't push. Just cover, I'll cover. Does Rainer really should plant the bomb? You shouldn't peek heaven by yourself. You should just hide. Let's talk about this for a bit. Rainer plant, Rainer. So here your team entry sites. Okay, great. Now we're entering as well. Rainer plant, Rainer plant. We're exposed don't to heaven, push, we're exposed to heaven, we're exposed to heaven. Cover, I'll cover. Now, nobody's exposed to heaven. So Yeah, I, I should either go... I should probably just go hell instead of peeking heaven again. Yeah, so the point of peeking heaven is so that if someone is heaven, then you can cover the angle. So like say if, if for whatever reason, like rain of plants suddenly open, then you can like cover the bomb plant. Or if a teammate is exposed yeah. to heaven, then you can turn that heaven, like what, that 1v1 between your teammate and the person in heaven yeah, into a 2v1. So 
if your goal here is to cover heaven for your team, because it seems like it is, then you want to cover it only when your team is exposed to heaven. Yeah. Rain a plant, rain a plant. Don't so push, don't push. While you're thinking about that, let's do this like mental exercise where like let's look at our teammates through the wall. Or look at your teammates on the mid map and see like when are they exposed to heaven and when are they not exposed to heaven. So okay. right now, they're not exposed to heaven. Not exposed, not exposed. Now Rainer's exposed for a brief couple of seconds while she's crossing to plant the bomb. Now she's no longer exposed because now she's behind the cover on the box. And now she's planning to be safe. And I'm exposed. And you're fully exposed. Sage, so, Sage is exposed, right? And then she goes back and yeah. the cover. Sage, Sage has been CT the whole time. Yeah. Even like hugging graffiti really tight like this is like... They're not gonna. She peeks out slowly, but I don't think they can really get a good angle on her. Yeah, they can't actually see Sage in that spot here. So like, let's pause, right? Okay. Right when Sage hugs the corner like this, like on the mini map, on the mini map. Yeah, it's that good. Sage is hugging the corner. That she's not exposed to heaven unless either they drop out of heaven or they jump on top of the the ledge, I guess. Yeah. The window sill. So while your team is not exposed to heaven, you should I also am. not expose yourself to heaven. So that if someone were to peek out from heaven right now, we don't accidentally take the one we won. Okay. Because right now, I, I can't afford to take one v ones because it's 3v5. Well, it's just like, generally speaking, you don't want to take one v ones if you don't have to. The entire time, okay. you don't have to. Your only goal right now is to make sure Vayner independence the bomb, and... Alternatively, I would look to make a play of our Sage, this is a bit higher level, but I would look to make a play of the Sage because it's 3v5. Yeah. Careful bus wing this. Yeah, careful bus wing this. Yeah. Right now you hold there, I'll hold. Okay, never mind. If your team is forcing mates, if you're gonna buy again, you want to buy full utility. Always make sure okay. you have full utility. You're still saving another 300 credits. Sounds like the wall they a long. Sage has already stomped a bit, so I think they already know they are here. She's still stomping. Wait for the white wall. Oh. This is okay timing. Okay, I go hell. Okay, what are you thinking here? Uh, Sage has it walled. I don't exactly have a good reason to be looking at our spawn long. Um... Wait, that's your Sage's well, wall? Yeah. Interesting. Man, I would um, say that's low-key a throw. Yeah, Jerry's wall Honestly, CT. Yeah, yeah, wall CT. Especially, like... Cause I'm on, I'm looking from hell to uh, long. I I think it's just uh, give someone else spike and then wall CT so that you don't die with spike and CT. So something to think about: so avoid by ones if you don't have to take them, and also voice two ones. Yeah. Never possible. Okay, so in this situation, like, hiding in hell is, like, an extremely low-value play. Because, like, yeah, cause you're just, like, waiting the, for the enemy to push into your teammates, and then they could take all the gunfights, and then what could happen is that you're still in hell while your team, like, dies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So instead, what you should be thinking is that each time that one of your teammates is exposed to somewhere or is taking a gunfight, right, you should look to play off that teammate, whether it's you're covering an angle that they're exposed to and they're not able to watch it. So for example, if if your team is like really focused on CT spawn, then let's say like your your Viper is exposed to heaven, but she's not able to look at heaven because she's focused on CT spawn, or your Rainer is, is focused on CT spawn, and she's not able to look at heaven. Yep. So cover angles that your teammates are exposed to and not able to, to cover. And also look to again play off your teammates, well, like you, as soon as the teammate makes contact, they're in a 1v1, you force it to become a 2v1. 
Okay. So these are things to, to look look for during this postpone situation. <clears throat> okay, so now we can think about what angles that the enemy might come from. Most likely CT, most likely yeah, heaven. Yeah, CT, and heaven, then... and possibly on flank from short, the yeah. sewer. Right. Okay. We don't have any information on them. Okay. We hear a lot coming from seat spawn, a whole bunch of footsteps. The bot is being in contact with somebody with a marshal at CT spawn. So automatically I'm thinking um, I want to play off my Viper's contact. The first, so like if people were to push through CT spawn, the first person they make contact with is a Viper from Graffiti. Yeah. See, uh, chamber up top. Because right now we're, we're not in a position to, to cover heaven, so next best bet is to play off people um, exposed to CT or or yeah. play off teammates that are going to make contact with people pushing on a CT. So here our Raze is in a gunfight right now. Say, uh, chamber up top. She's trying to ignore the chamber, ignore the chamber so that she can peek CT. When this happens, we should also peek CT with her. Okay. So she's peeking CT, she's shooting, shooting the jet. Okay, now we know for sure somebody is long, although now Rain is going to get that kill for us. We can punish the Reina for jumping into heaven, she generally shouldn't do that. Now our Raze is like being really aggressive, we should also be aggressive. Our Raze is pushing to CT spawn. We want to prevent 1v1s from happening and force 2v1s to happen. So here she's okay. taking a 1v1 with the chamber, and we're just we're kind of just hiding in sight. And we're still hiding in sight. Yeah. Now we know where the last guy is, we need to box the last guy in. Now look to our right, our, our Viper is going to make another 1v1 play. She's pushing to walk yeah, to the city I, I, should, I, I should push with her. You should push with her, exactly. Either you push with her, or you get ready to trade with her, or you, you spend your utility so that you make this like a much safer play. So for example, uh, while this uh, raise kills somebody, or you actually kill the jet, and she's pushing to seek the spawn, imagine if you, like, you send a flash to heaven, or you send a flash around the corner, Pass CT spawn or something to make it okay. easier for the rays so that while she's pushing, she's not exposed to three different angles. Okay. But yeah, by you, by sitting in hell, you're getting zero, zero yeah. value for your team. The yeah, only thing yeah. you did was kill that random who jumped out a window, yeah. which shouldn't even happen in the first place. Yeah, there's no reason for her to jump out a window. <laughs> I use it more often than not. Enemy spotted A. Okay, she saw three of you. You guys do choose to commit. Okay, you do choose to commit. Then we're not. Then we're One heaven. Hopefully your team is communicating intent because it seems like Marshall. you and your Rainer are running away, but then the other half of your team is also putting it pushing in. Yeah. So a little bit of communication coordination co coordination issue that your team needs to be on the same page. Either you guys all going in, or you guys all like deciding to all go in, or deciding to all go out. Unless you have like some specific plan that your your fake rotate or something, what like happened? you guys are stopping away, but the other players would just like sit and wait and hide so that you kind of pretend that your guys are running away. But instead, Viper commits the wall, Raze peeks out in heaven, so it seems like that was not communicated. Now your team is like getting ready to entry, but you're like still in the Yeah, but I'm all the way in the back. All the way in the back. Like your utility is like really important to have for entry. And then your team just happened to take sight without any of it. Before that, use it close to heaven. One of one of my brain has something. Okay, I guess it's okay. Nice. The problem is if you don't see anyone, I wanna expose yourself to heaven here. Yo, can I try it or no? Let's go back. So we dog T spawn, checking for a flank. And it seemed like we wanted to get back to our team, but we can't really do so unless our team covers our heaven. Yeah. Yo, can I try it or no? Now, at this point, it's been about 5 seconds or so. Now, we might have to consider that someone could be T spawn. So either yeah. we commit to just holding a lobby, 
Or we send a flash to get information for us. Killjoy. One enemy remaining. Okay, now we know the last guy is heaven. We can just run off our knife out. Get ready to play for our teammates. Get ready to heal somebody, whatever. This seems like anybody needs healing based on the health bars at the top. So I always just look to trade off somebody. So right now, okay. one person who's semi alone is your Viper. And she's exposed to heaven. Uh. The Sage and the Reyna are basically hugging each other and pushing on a CT right now. Right, okay. they're pushing on a CT. This Viper is ex the only thing you have to worry about is heaven. So just be ready to swing off the Viper making contact. We know the last guy's CT spawn, we don't have to like nice. do these sewers. So, kind of low value, our team kind of carry this there, but it's all good. It's kind of a waste of money. Okay. Sage is like really entering, really entering. She's like, she, look at her. She's gonna wall with the bomb. She's gonna go in first. We need to help her ASAP. We should not be dogging this. Whether you find people or not, like your team's gonna get on site. Yeah. Like I'm just looking at like the the body language of your teammates. Your Sage. Is in like the animation to put down a wall. She is like right outside of B, the B entrance that she's like just gonna commit. And she commits. Luckily, she's not dead. She could very easily be dead and bomb will be stuck in B site. And then like the bomb will basically be lost at that point. Okay, we managed the entry. We wall off this. Careful about taking long ones here. Your, your legs are exposed. Careful, yeah. Careful about taking long ones. You can heal. Again, throughout this, just make sure that when your teammates are exposed to somewhere or they're in engagement, we can swing off of them. Assuming we're in position to do so. Right now, we're only able to. Watch mid, kind of crossfire mid, and that's really it. So this Reyna should just hide back site. Let's go back a little bit. They get the kill, which is fine. The Reyna and the Viper should just hide back site and play off each other. Instead of peeking to see, see uh, Link. Viper committed a little bit too hard. Reyna, Reyna pass. Committed a little too hard. You have to trade that too slow. Try to try the raise, too slow, get the gun, run away. I think you're dead here. Yeah, yeah, I okay. Everything was just kind of too slow. It seemed like the whole time yeah. you're, just, you're just sitting in this corner and you're not really thinking about anything. Basically, the only thing you did was just heal your teammate, heal your raise. Yeah. So, unless you, you think that someone's gonna come this wall, there's like no point in playing off this wall. The only thing you have to worry about is either B mid or C, uh, C link. Okay. So since you're not in position to help C Link, then the only thing you have to do is just make sure that nobody comes through through uh, the B B entrance or like nobody comes mid, and also that if your team does get exposed to mid, like here eventually your Reyna gets exposed to mid, takes a one v one, and eventually your Raze gets exposed to mid, takes a one v one, that you're there to swing with your team. Okay. Is it also be an easy time to use a flash? Like, if you want to check that? Yeah, that'd be great. Great time to use flash because right now you have zero info throughout this entire time. Unless you you plan to like save your flashes for like defensive or something, but I think sending at least one flash to like gain inf information would be really, really helpful. So, for example, if uh, after you heal this raise, after this heal this raise, then what you can do send a flash mid to basically check mid for you. If there's nobody mid, then you can go go uh, rotate a little bit to your right side so that you can help out your Reyna and help out your Viper so that when they do make contact with people in, in C, C, uh, C Link, then you can swing out and trade someone. Fine. Okay. Instead, we're just kind of, we're kind of just sitting here and then, okay, fine, even if you don't use any utility, you still want to be ready to trade people out as soon as they get exposed. So eventually, this Reyna is going to leave back sites. She's gonna come over here and then be fully exposed to mid. 
And then we're, we're still just jumping on this box. We're not in position to trade. Now let's raise. She's jumping down because she's she wants to get away from mom and it looks like she wants to take this 1v1. But again, we're still hiding in this corner. Yo, just dip and take, dip so and take. 1v1s are happening around us and we're not really doing anything to change that. <clears throat> okay, you guys are full sending it too long. Generally, five slacking is bad, but what are you gonna do? It, it does the job in bronze quite nicely. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Love it doesn't. It. It's not good, but. Okay. Let's go back to this dog. What do we want a dog giving? The dog just kind of goes onto site, but. You didn't really check the corner to your left. Yeah. You, you check Lucy to your right, which is fine. You check back site, which is fine. But we actually don't know if someone's to our left. And okay, so the stage is actually to the right. We choose to break the wall, which is great. And then we reload. Why reload? Uh, I feel like I reload too much, even like if I have enough bullets for a gunfight. I've kind of just gotten in the habit of just feeling I need to reload. Yeah, I think probably try to get rid of that habit, or ask yourself if this like why am I reloading? Yeah. So ask yourself, or like constantly ask yourself why you are reloading. To help get rid of this habit, to figure out why this this habit is happening, because right now you're breaking the wall, which is great. The problem is that there's still two sections of the wall that's blocking your team from entering site, and like yeah, your team could enter through like the middle section, but it's still like a funnel, right? I I have like three bullets that I could use on the wall. Yeah, you have another seventeen bullets. That's another clip that you can or half of a clip of a magazine that you can break at least like another half section of the wall, or like or like deal half damage to another section of the wall. Then yeah. you reload, then you finish the other sections. One micro comment yeah. with the dog is like, you could, like you could use it to clear like um, close co close corners on the- Oh, this is another throw wall from Sage. Like, I mean, you, can, like, I mean, you can use it to clear the close corners on the site, like behind that that green box too, and then you can use a flash for backside. That's true, yeah. So if you want to spend yeah. utility to clear the entire entire site and be 100% safe, then generally use your dog to clear close corners, and then use your your flash to, to clear open areas. So backside is a much more open area. Flash that you get information that people are backside, but you can dog can clear corners a lot more efficiently. Okay. So one path you could take is that you send your dog the clearest left. Then you turn to right to a garage, you you clear right, then you clear outside of garage, then you clear logs, and then that's the extent of your dog. Then you okay. send a, a flash to be backside or even platform, whatever, and that clears backside. Well, at least give, gives you information that there's people backside. Okay. All right. Any questions so far? Uh, uh no. No. Okay. Sage is making a YOLO play. Unfortunate. We want to break as much of the wall as possible. Or we want to get the hell out of here. Because at this point, it's probably this pushes Yeah, they, they already they already know we're here. Uh, yeah, wouldn't that and be we're over stuck. That's your Sage's own slow wars. Two in garage. You, you have a lot of bullets. You don't need to reload. Here, I would even consider just like getting the hell out, but. Your team also needs to be on the same page so that you could get up by yourself, but then your team might just commit without you and then you'll be stuck in a moment. Yeah, I, I feel I feel like not enough road take calls are made in bronze. Okay. That's fine. So as long as your team is on the same page, if they're committing, then fine. You you can commit too. But then when you're choosing to commit here, like this heal is not useful because like Yeah, no. Your gun stage fight, is already high enough health. No, because the, a gunfight can happen at any time. And yeah. like, your heal is not going to heal if they're in a gunfight. Yeah. 
to like your raise is already fighting someone even if she like was at half health she she has, has health to get benefit. healed it doesn't benefit it's not going to help her win the loving one the winning loving one is more important than getting healed yeah and then here you, you trade you don't pick with the sage perfect Two love garage. it then we reload don't love it. The site is not clear. No, we don't like that. We know that someone is, is back sites because the raise is fighting somebody and, back and sites. Stage also in garage. Yeah, as soon as you kill this jet, I would be extremely worried about someone to your left because that person yeah. who just killed raise is gonna kill you next. Two in garage. But then we reload. Which is really bad. Luckily, this person to our left doesn't actually peek us. And then maybe if you didn't reload, you could have killed that sage. But things could have gone a lot worse. So again, this all kind of boils down to like playing with our teammates, checking their body language, see like what they're intending to do. You know, also don't reload that much. Or at least don't reload when you're in a gunfight or about to take a gunfight. And the stage should just play duelist. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. What's up? Well, well, one thing you could do to help your teammates is flash over that wall, and that'll clear the guy yeah. off the of wall, and, and then you can dog out short. So yeah, I, I, I honestly yeah. feel like I'm not sure how to use utility, especially yeah. flashes. Can, can you rewind the clip a little bit? Yeah. Like, yeah, you see. Oh. Yeah, that is a good point. So while you're stuck in this ice, you're not really able to like to wide swing with your teammate. The only thing you can do right now to help your is your raise is to flash. Uh, I, I'll, yeah. uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry for the mix-up. I was talking about like I'm off of the A-long thing. Off the long, so like flashing before? Oh, like I'm like I'm, uh, the start of the next round. At the start of the next round. But this one or the next round? Uh, next round. Oh, sorry. At the start of the round that we that, that we just got to. Yeah, like you can flash over, you can flash over this wall right here that you're facing right now, and, and that won't flash yeah. your teammates, but it will flash the guy peeking long. That's true. And, and then, and then from there, like you, you can dog out sewers. Yeah, that's a good point. That's the only I like doing off start as a sky on this map. I think also depends on how your team wants to play, because. If I was playing A long and I got flashed like that, I would kind of expect some sort of A push or A aggression. Yeah. So as long as you're, you're, you're coordinating with your team, you're communicating that because uh, from your team's body language that everybody is walking at the beginning of the round, it seems like they just want to walk into A and then play as soon as, or execute as soon as someone makes contact. Any questions so far? Uh, no. But what I'm seeing from your sage, your sage really wants to be a duelist. So probably really? you guys would just have to like, yeah, you guys have to. Yeah, with the full match. Right now you're a little bit far away from your sage. You can flash for a great thing. What did the flash end up? You see the mini map. Okay, so it ends up having graffiti, covering health to some extent. I don't think you need a second flash because no one can play off that flash. Right now your job is to break the wall. Or get the orb and then break the wall. Now we're turning around like... Laying in this wall get way too much value. Nice, you don't have to beat this. Oh, okay. Good flash. Kill. You don't really have to reload, but I guess you're safe. It's fine. This man is already watching front. Uh, the entrance. Okay. So after this is up, we want to yep swing up for a viper. Unlucky, you can't reach really swing because it's the slow. Just minor thing here. As soon as your two teammates die, the angle you're holding is yeah. fine. I don't think you have to like really swing because it's really hard to swing when you're slowed. I would just yeah. wait for the enemy to swing into my cross here. So a little bit on cross placement, I would just like, I would expect them to like, either run into sewers and like run in front of me or run into long to 
to clear along. Mm -hmm. So here, like, we're really, like, worried that the bomb's gonna get defused, but it takes seven seconds to defuse. Just wait for, like, this chamber. If you just waited, you probably could've killed this chamber. Okay. Really far, generally, generally, I want to get close as possible. So, like, let's see, when your dog is going in, nobody's really going in except I don't know, your sage because your sage must be a duelist. But like, your Reina, your rays are just like kind of camping. Yeah, what do you think on ult right now? Ult, um, what do you think on ult right now? Um. Are you asking me or are you asking Jericho? Uh, I'm, a I'm asking. I'm asking you. Uh, I think you could ult now, but the thing is, like your team is like executing really fast, so uh, it's hard to say. Like you could ult just like to get a li little bit of information to make the entries easier, or if your team's like already full sending it, then you can ult later on in the round, like post plant or something, to get information where the enemies are rotating from. So I think either way it could be. Be viable. But if you were to, to alt to allow your team to entry faster or more so not fast to, to entry more safely, then you want to be in position to to maximize your ult. Like if you ult right here, your ult is gonna like say if it finds people the close to people or B site, then your team has to like wait for your your ult to Climb up these stairs, and then enter B site. Then the, your team can play off the alt. But it seems like your team is like already like your viper is like super close. She's about to expose herself to a link. That a fight is already gonna happen within the next second before you can even get your alt off. So that's one thing I'm kind of worried about. Yeah, I think with Sky is like pretty versatile. So like. It's kind of hard to go wrong to alt unless, unless you know where last person is, and then your alt is kind of a waste. Yeah, I agree. Okay. okay, so now actually now would be a good time to alt because then your team can just like entry off the alt. Yeah, it, it would clear left and right at the same time. Here, I would not do this. Here, you're exposed to C link. This could be a volume one. We're exposed for a second there. We expose again. Okay, now the second time it's safer because now your ult has, is, is making contact with that. Careful about pushing alone. Careful about pushing alone. Get a gun. Careful about pushing alone. This whole time we could be the only one. Okay, now we're in a really strong lick position as long as we start walking. Yeah. We just kind of full sprinted a bit too much there. So let's go back. Okay. To reiterate, I would say yeah, continue breaking as much as the wall as possible. Go to the stuff this one. You don't have to reload as fast as possible. You don't have to reload here. You can like wait a little bit in case someone peeks you. You don't want to expose yourself to C Link by yourself. Wait for a, te a teammate to swing with you. The ults, we play off the ults. And this, this, the main thing is like this look here, I mean, this is extremely risky because we're by ourselves and nobody's with us. And then we, we're kind of half checking a lot of points. We don't even check a site, what well, somebody was a site and waiting for us. At this point, now we're fully in CT spawn. Now we're in a really strong look position. So as long as we like use that to our advantage, instead we just kind of, we kind of just like full Get sprint through everything. Just like, oh, I'm going to play death match and find somebody. And then the enemy stage like hears you and just waits for you. Any questions so far? I'll pause here. Um do I would I just slow walk there? Yeah, you would just slow walk. Okay. So, that's that's what I thought. So after you get to like 
once you get into like the middle of CT spawn here, you just walk right here. So that you wait for your team to make contact. No, apparently. And then you yes. then you peek out. So for example, if you started walking mm -hmm. here, and then by the time you get to uh, between CT spawn and, and C. No, it was pretty shit. Yeah, yeah, why don't you tell me more about that? I'm just letting you know you're unmuted, Teaspoons. Trying to say I appreciate it. What? Oh, what? Hello, Teaspoons. It's very sweet. What? You... Sorry. Fuck, okay. My phone is dying, so it's plugged in. Okay. Uh, it's... Teaspoons, you are currently unmuted. Yeah, of course. Let's see, do I have the power to meet this guy? <laughs> hmm. Um, I mean, I do you have the I power can. to move them? Yeah, I can okay, move them. Yeah, there, there you go. go. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, so yeah. Uh, when you, your job to look, well, if you're designed to look here, is to oh, wait you for... Me. Hello, teaspoons. Okay, thank you. He uh, himself, he's good. Thank you. So while you're looking here, your job is to, like, kind of... Like, while you're looking, you want to play, like, um, red light, green light, basically, where, like, you're playing slow, you're playing passive, you're slow walking, you're waiting for your team to make contacts. When your team makes contact, that's a green light where like you full send it or yeah. you, you run faster or you get yourself into the fight as fast as possible. But while your team is not in a fight, you play red light where you play slow, you walk, you wait for information or whatever. So that so that you're like again it goes 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 back to like not taking one v ones if you don't have to, and then forcing two v ones whenever you can. So you basically you wait for your team to okay. contact, then a one v one. You then you swing out from from the flank, and then you force it to become a two v one. Or, or if you're let's say if you're let's say Viper for example was like peeking into C lobby, and then well it's not C lobby C link, and then she just like makes light contact, maybe she spots somebody, and then she like she baits their attention, right? That also becomes in between like a red and green light, but like. You want to get the flank on that person who's in C link, but you don't want to just like full sprint and like let let them know that you're coming behind them. Okay. So looking is all about like a combination of timing and awareness of what's happening around you and what's happening around the map. But yeah, by you kind of full saying it, you kind of ignore all that. Like this whole time, nothing's really happening in B site. Your team has not baited any attention for you. You find yourself in a lobby one because you full sprinted. Okay, any questions about that so far? Um. Okay. We have to. Lagging along is not necessarily bad, but our team is not going A at all. So this log is kind of yeah. just a waste. Whether you find someone or not, your team's not going to be able to do anything with that information. Yeah, no, we're not getting anything out of it. Okay, let's pause here. What are you thinking? Um, Sage and Rays are pushing C. And Sage is going through garage. And she has spikes, so I should go with her. Yeah, okay. So while you, the Viper, and the Rainer are just like walking yeah, ahead, right. you look at Sage and Raze's body language, they're already pushing to garage. Yeah. And then a boom bot happens, and they full send it, that means we need to full send it. We need to help them as fast as possible. Because okay. they're gonna find a gunfight as fast as possible, or well, as soon as possible. And when that happens, right now we're too far away. Where if they were to get a gunfight right now, we can't do anything to help. Like, Raze is already gonna entry by herself. Sage is like looking into seat spawn into the enemy territory by herself with the bomb. Like, we're nowhere near to help anybody right now. This, yeah, I'm yeah. slow walking, so. And now, this, this slow walk is pointless because. Your boom bat has already given away information. Your sage has already stomped in garage and given away information that they that your team or at least one person or multiple people are in garage. Yeah. So now we're full sending it. Great. The sage should plant somewhere. Come plant C. We should just continue full sending it until we get a group of our sage. Continue full sending it. Okay, 
Okay, let's pause here. What are you thinking? Um, we know one CT, and we don't have uh, any information on the others, so they could be flank. Okay, so by flank you mean C long, like T spawn. Yeah. Okay. Or okay. they could be in B main. I think it is. I'm not sure. B main? You mean like B site, or you mean like uh, mid? Okay. It, it could be four of them could be anywhere because we know once the rain is CT. Okay, I think that makes perfect sense. So while this is all happening, while the bomb is coming to get planted, we have two options. One, well, the general option is to we want to play for team and and help your team take engagements. So right now, there's an engagement happening with your rays at CT spawn, and we can choose to help our rays. But I think our viper can already handle that for us. Yeah. So now the other two perfectly viable options is to help Arena if Arena is going to like push into garage or push wherever or help our Sage because we don't actually don't know if an enemy has pushed into Silong yet or, or yeah, like, we don't, we don't this know. whole time someone could have walked into Silong and then the, the angle that Sage is exposed to, she's exposed to Silong so right now either protect your Sage for the next few seconds or protect your Arena for the next few seconds or whatever yeah Alternatively, you can also just like burn your utility and just flash. So maybe okay. you, can, you can do two things at the same time. Like you'll flash the along that will protect your sage while you continue pushing with Urena wherever she goes. Maybe she's okay. pushing garage. So you, you basically accomplish two things at the same time. Okay. Okay. So we're playing for Urena. Okay, now we're not playing for Urena. Now we're just hiding, hiding on logs. This is too passive because one runs are happening. Like uh, around around here, based on Raze's positioning, she's exposed to CT and she's exposed to C lobby or okay. C rank rather. Sorry, so that uh, um... somebody could push out of out of B and then like shoot Raze in the side or flanker rather. Yeah. And our Viper, who was originally with the Rays, has now Left. abandoned her, right? So now yeah. we should probably go help our Rays, because Rays is... Yeah, is, that's, is that's what I was thinking. But we're just waiting, we're waiting, waiting, now it's late. 48 Sage from uh, A. Now we ult, from okay, C. great, let's play around the ults. Oh, now we know from someone C. is long. Where is this random shot coming from? How, how do you play in a Viper ult? Uh, like your team's Viper ult. Yeah, so generally speaking, Viper ult, you want to keep your back to a wall or keep your back to a teammate as much as possible. The worst okay. thing that happened in a Viper ult is that you get flanks and like uh, you get shot in the back basically because you were too busy looking in a different direction. Okay. So for example, here you can hide in the corner of sight. So actually, let's go to. Actually, let's wait till we see what it expands to. Okay, so it expands to most of the site plus platform, okay. Mm -hmm. Okie dokie, let's go back to clear, let's go to C site. So our Viper Alt covers kind of like this, which is perfect because it basically covers almost the entire site. So one option in the bomb, that bomb is like planted here, bomb's planted here. And one option is to hug this corner here. Just like extremely safe, relatively passive. Hug this corner here. I'll probably only do this if, if I was like the last person standing. Again, even if you're in the red bolt, you can still play with your teammates. As soon as they make contact, you swing out into the smoke and kill whoever they just whoever they just fought. So one option is that you're playing this corner here. It's very safe because now anybody who pushes through the smoke will be within your line of sight. Your line of sight is like this. Kind of where the FOV is. So basically, any sort of push will always happen in front of you. Okay. Okay. Another option will be keeping your you back to a wall again. Like maybe you play on here on the platform. And but I get this is more so like if you're by yourself because you still have two oh, two other teammates. You want to play off of them as much as possible. So that, let's say, more options. Let's say you have some teammates who are not in the smoke. Let's say you have, uh, the Reyna is still here. 
she's still hiding in this corner. And she's exposed, she could potentially fight someone, a CT spawn. So knowing this, we'll position ourselves on the edge of the smoke, like here. And then as soon as Vayner takes a 1v1, we push out the smoke and it forces us to become a 2v1. Okay. Another option could be that if we expect, uh, if Vayna gives this up, that she's no longer exposed to CT spawn, maybe she is playing uh, here. And then someone from long pushes Urena. Okay. Now Urena is in a 1v1. Now you position yourself here, that's like on the edge of the smoke. As soon as this engagement happens, you push out the smoke, you kill, you trade out this person. So, yeah, trading the Viper Walls as just like any other smoke, just like it covers, a, except that it covers a much larger area. That's number one. Number two is is uh, keeping your back to a wall or keeping your back to something safe, you know, the wall or teammate, whatever, so that you don't have to like constantly, like say if you're in the middle of this thing, you're in the middle of here. Now you look at this direction, you have to worry about this direction, you have to worry about this direction, right? Yeah. Many directions to worry about. Or even worse, if you're if you're like here, this is probably the worst spot because someone could come here, someone could push further and then come here, someone can push them here, right? So yeah, many you, angles you don't to worry have about. any protection at all. There's just too many angles to worry about. You want to limit yeah. the number of angles to worry about. And then this is, I guess, the best thing is that you do have like these boxes here to help help cover some of it, but there's still a lot of angles to worry about. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Okay, let's go back. Maybe we'll see. Oh, that's a really sick swing. I mean, it makes sense because your Rainer was fighting. But anymore. Last player standing. Let's see, how many people did we see originally? Also, another powerful thing about playing inside smokes is when you have flashes, because when you just like, you can like basically pop flash at any time out of any part of the smoke, like out of, like pop flash from in the smoke to out of the smoke, and that makes your peak like much safer as well. So this is a huge engagement happening. Here, you can consider just, just pop flash outside the smoke, and then you can swing out. That makes this peak a lot safer. Okay. Also, another thing you can do too, because you have a Spectre, is that your bullets are hidden whenever you're inside smoke, compared to a Vandal where they always see your, your bullet tracers. Mm -hmm. So one thing you can do is basically just spray through the smoke as much as possible, because you have uh, all this ammo, just spray at them. So some safer options, because, because you know that there's two people at CT spawn, instead of peeking through the smoke, you can just spray through the smoke. Maybe okay. you even bring up the minimap, ping where you want to spray, and then just, then you know exactly where to line up your cross here. Then it becomes like super easy, super safe. Okay. Last player standing. Okay, okay. Yeah, we'll just dog this. I don't know why you rotate around. You see, you know, you see your your rays and your viper are already like ready to push sewers with you. Yeah, I, I, I should just stay with them. I don't have a need to rotate when I can just stay with you. Unfortunately, Reno left you for some reason. I don't know why. Because of a wall. Ah. Uh, Man, your team is just like allergic to walls or something. You know what happens to you? That, that's a bit crazy. Okay, so now there's not much we can accomplish here unless we think we can like kill the sage who's on the wall. But again, this is a long one. I okay. was really, like, really confident in winning that. What's your opinion on endlessly baiting your teammates in this elo? Depends how you bait them. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah like, because, like, um, I noticed that, like, a lot of the times, like, especially in bronze, like, I, I just end up, like, allowing my teammates to run in front of me and just trade them out, like, most of the time. Like, I never go in first because, like, I know that they're just not, never going to follow. Yeah, that's generally what you should be doing anyways if you're not a duelist. So I think that you should be adapting to sort of how your team plays in a sense of if they love to push out, then sure, you run with them, trade them, maybe even bait them once or twice. But I guess using comms here would be really useful, telling them to plant or just play objective. Yeah. Yep. I think most of the time we, when people are referring to baiting, it's more so just like trading your teammates out, which people it's think happens. It's fairly bad. Which is really is actually really really good on attack, especially on attack. Yeah. Like a one v one is much easier to win on attack than a five v five. Yeah. So I think. Uh, don't think of it as like a negative connotation, like oh, I'm just baiting my teammates. But instead, think of it as like you're you're playing off your teammates and you're timing your aggression with your teammates, so that whenever you again, this all goes back. Whenever your teammates are in a one v one, whenever they're in an engagement, in a duel, or whatever, you want to peek out with them, like turn yeah. it, force it to become a two v one, or yeah, okay. what we can do whatever we can do to help them out. Maybe we spend some utility, whatever, whatever we can do to help them out. But generally okay. trading them out, generally double peeking with them is like the fundamental answer to playing with your teammates. Alright. Yeah. I find that it's usually best to not go first. Yeah. Typically. Yeah. Not always, but typically I find that's the, that's the best way to go. Well, I think... Uh, when you're playing duelist, or when you're when you're the so to speak entry fragger, because even if you're not a duelist, because sometimes you still have to entry, given um, given certain situations, I think uh, a lot of it is communication with your teammates so that your team is on the same page, um, awareness of where your teammates are. So, for example, it's a very common scenario where like you entry into site, you hold W, but what actually happens is that the enemy sage throws an ice, or the enemy raise throws a nade, or whatever or somebody and then a team like those are Mali and that separates you from your teammates so even though you entered you're entering alone and your team is like stuck behind the Mali for three to five seconds or however long it lasts so it's important to have the awareness of like what's happening around you and and important to know like when your team is like with you or not okay Any questions so far? Uh, no. Okay. <clears throat> Sounds like a wall and garage. Okay, uh, no, it's a wall seat. You can, you can just grab this orb. Somebody should grab the orb. Yeah. Right okay, yeah, when you're confronted okay, with a wall, uh, you have. Team. I, I have weapons. a free orb. You, you, you also have a free orb, that's true. Generally what I do when I see a wall like this is that I would break the wall and then pick one of two options. Either I break the wall and I stick around because maybe I'm committing to pushing C or something. Or the safer and more likely option is that I break the wall and I rotate somewhere else. Because by breaking the wall, now the enemy team, particularly the enemy sage, cannot rely on the wall to protect them from C long because anytime they have to think about that somebody could be c long and about to push to c long so then they have to keep someone c or they have to keep someone watching c long just in case that happens yeah Risen garage but here like you, you choose not to break the wall and now the, the longer that this wall stays up the more value it gets where the enemy team does not even have to wait like if i was enemy team I wouldn't even put anybody in C, in C site right now. I would just give up site completely because I don't need to worry about right now. I would probably stack garage. Honestly, I would stack garage or I would stack B mid until the wall at C long breaks. Then I would like rotate over, rotate someone over. Okay. 
That makes sense. So is that is that why uh, people think Sage is like make or break in comps like this or? What do you mean, make or break? Because most people are like not picking Sage as trolling. Well, to, I don't I don't know why people think that. Well, Sage is mostly picked for her res and mostly yeah, picked for, her res is really good. Yeah, mostly the res and mostly for. For specific wall plays, most of the time it's, it's walling off to make a, a plant safer. The vast majority yeah. of the time is for that. I'm not gonna lie though, like I'd rather have a cipher than a sage on this map, especially like like sage. Like my wall, her res might be a really good ult. I don't know. I find it really hard to use sometimes if your teammates keep dying in like really weird spots. Like I know it has like the highest win rate ult, but that's only because you typically only get to eat, get a chance to use it in man up scenarios when they can't cover the dead body. And, and, and so, like, the ult becomes really good for converting uh, man up scenarios. At least that's, that, that, that's, that's as far as I recognize, usually. Yeah. I don't know. Like, and the bottom line is, I, I find that, like, especially, like, on maps like Haven and something, I find the Cypher a lot better than, like, a Sage. Yeah, I think I would agree with that. I think uh, other Sentinels, like, like uh, Cypher and Chamber, their utility that can cover multiple angles is much better than a sage wall that only covers one. Unless it's unless you wall something that happens to get untouched for a long time, then it's like not that good in defense. Or unless you use the wall, like for example, if you wall B, then you can play around the wall. Like maybe you play with a shot or something. Now, if the enemy team pushes through B, they have more angles to check because they have to check around the wall. Plus, they have to check on top of the boxes because it you could have potentially um, jump on top of the box or even walled off some teammates on top of the box so then all like pushing b is like becomes really difficult yeah. okay even if they broke like one column on the wall yeah. but yeah um, i don't know i i kind of i kind of like got distracted there talking about sage versus other sentinels on this map sorry you know it's okay Right. Any more questions? Uh, uh, no, sir. No. Right. Gotta get bomb. Don't get this. The Reno is pushing a pick dealer. Did you get the Reno. I think you're too focused on like fighting this. Right here, I would just like run up to the right side to so keep the door like blocking the view and just pick up the bomb. That should be a guaranteed pickup. Here, you don't really have to peek this. If you're also shooting peek either, just get the bomb and go somewhere else. Now, the, the vandal is like right next to your feet. Just drop your gun, get the vandal. Then you can like make a play or something. Or again, I think we'll just, just hug the right side and then pick the bomb. You can also here, you can also just wait. So many options here. You can just like continue bidding attention, play in a non committed way, just like. Juggle peek, spray the box, whatever, spray the spray the doors, great attention. Because if you look on the minimap, your Viper is about to flank them from C because uh, she broke the wall, I think. Wish she, she walked she walked it. Okay, she looks like she's knifing the wall. So while she's knifing the wall, she's probably making noise. Here I would just bait attention. Instead of pushing like this, just bait attention because your viper is gonna flank them. And just like that. Oh, she gets two kills, right? Oh, she fucked up. But I think there's a, a timing and awareness issue where, like, you're too committed, too committed to pushing to garage, thinking, like, I don't know, maybe you're thinking that the only way to get the bomb right now is to push and kill these people. But that's not necessarily true. Okay. Any questions about so far about this round? Uh, no. Okay. Oh, that's it. That's last round. Okay, so let's look at the notes that we took. Okay, so major issues. Too many rounds that you you play the round without buying full utility. Generally, unless it's like pistol round or something, if you can afford the utility, you should buy it because it's your initial utility is super useful. The flash is super useful. Yeah. Your dog is super useful. The healing is so-so, but like flashing dog is like almost always useful. 
Uh, second thing, try to think about team economy. This is more important than towards the, the beginning where a lot of times where your team just kind of threw away guns or you yourself bought guns, but your team like could have used guns that you had or guns that you picked up from previous rounds. Mm -hmm. Or a couple of times where like you had max money or someone else had max money and then your team didn't like um, efficiently keep the economy kind of even where you kind of lost money because someone was already max, etc. Okay. And that kind of like snow has a snowball effect because like like maybe you lose like two rounds but like let's say you like uh you guys lose two rounds in a row then now you guys have to full save even though like one person can buy and, and only only one person can buy because that's the only person that, that had the, the max money but if you guys like kept the economy more even then you could like have less equal rounds or you maybe you could buy three or four rounds if you kept the money even Okay, and uh, other issues, try to play contact off your teammates. So a lot of times where like, you're, like a lot of times you're, you're hiding, like you you push into, you took a site control and you're hiding in, in hell. Or you guys took B site control and you're just hiding in the corner of the site. Or, or even when you guys, your team is pushing, like you're, you're pushing alone or your team is pushing alone and you're not really there to like help them. And then you're kind of like off doing your own thing. So as much as possible, play a contact of your teammates. Swing as soon as they're in an engagement. And likewise, to the next bullet points, if you find yourself the, the one to be making first contact, then try not to commit to that gunfight. Your goal there is not to win the gunfight. Your goal is to bait attention so that your teammate can swing off you and get the trade. Okay. And also try not oh, to take so that, would be, yeah, that, would, that would be how uh, you'd go about training yourself out of them. Right, so when you're in those type of positions, you want to be uncommitted and make sure that a teammate is nearby to trade you out. Okay. <laughs> and uh, uh Kami's are your mic is unmuted. Alright, so Try not to commit to confronting and angles if you don't have to. There's a couple of times where like you you push by yourself and like you commit to this one v one, so you commit to this one v twos or whatever. And like that last one was a good example where like you don't have to fight those people in garage. Your goal there is just to get the bomb and then probably just go somewhere else. You know that there's people in garage, you can like run it to run it to A. Or you know that your viper pushed up C, C site is clear, you can just get bomb, run run through C long. Okay. So yeah, try not to commit to gunfights and angles if you don't have to. And this ties in again, the 1v1s if you don't have to take them. And force 2v1s whenever possible. So an example is like when you're in a post-plant situation, your team is like spreading out. Keep track of like where your teammates are headed, what positions they're playing, what angles they're exposed to. And then think about like, how can I be useful to my team? Like, can I cover an angle? that my team is exposed to. If my team is exposed to multiple angles, can I cover one of them? Or if my team is like pushing really aggressively, can I like push with them? Am I in position to, to push with them? Like how far am I? There's a couple of times where like Sage, and this is not specifically on you, but also your team, that your Sage like really wants to be a duelist. She's entering by herself, even when she has bomb. And the rest of her team is like oh, at okay. least three seconds behind her. So that she could potentially take a one one die, and then now your team is like in a 5v4 and you can't you can't trade her out at all because your team is like too far away or your team is not coordinated enough or at least you're not coordinated enough with your with what's happening around you okay all right so some of the minor stuff try to look more a lot of times in defense you're uh, you're playing c long and then you would dog c long and then you see that no one's there but then you just you just kind of sit c like or sometimes the, the, the enemy, you know, your team says like all five a long and then instead of like instead of looking like going for a flank then instead you just like you take a super safe like rotation through c to spawn whereas instead you can you can take a faster rotation through b site or you had some teammates that like sometimes your rays would push mid you can like push mid with her or you can look look c and, and gain information that they're not c and gain more and more information that they're not C, they're not T-spawn, they're not mid, most likely they're A. 
Okay, that's, yeah, that makes sense. So this kind of ties into number two about try to gain information and then deny information. So there's one time where you you did dog outside a garage and you, you got all the way to T-Spawn and you saw a, a um, Killjoy turret. turret. So one way to deny information is to just to run over there, break the turret, and then leave. In the same way, like if you find yourself face of a sage wall, you break the sage wall and then you leave. So it denies... Okay. The enemy from gaining that information that someone could be some now somebody could be flank because the wall is broken because the terror is broken somebody could be flank therefore somebody has to be watching the flank they have to like spend resources to watch the flank so what's what means by okay. denying information and again as an initiator you have really strong tools to gain information there's too many times where like you die with with both flashes available in some cases, maybe like one or two rounds, but like you have both flashes and a dog available. So like, you should just be like spending that utility like liberally just to get information. Just as long as you have like at least one flash to like enter with or to play off with whatever, or defensive, whatever the case may be. But abuse the fact that Sky has at least three ut pieces of utility because after you spend a flash, it will go into like this 35 second cooldown where like you gain another flash in 30 sec 35 seconds. So by the time you use up all three, now your third flash will be available. Now you have four. So use your utility, gain information. Look more, gain information. And then with the information, that changes your play, your play style, that changes your decision making, that allows your team to rotate faster, more efficiently, whatever, allows your team to take map control, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Okay, so some other minor issues, too many times that you're not really buying with your team or you're not playing on the fact that your team has guns or it doesn't have guns, etc. I talked a little bit about it, but it hasn't shown that much, that often in that many rounds, so I left it as a minor. But generally, you want to buy, buy with your team and you want to tie into the next point, you want to full buy if you have the funds to buy. So there's no point where if your whole team is full buying and then you're buying a Spectre, well, why don't you just full buy with your team and then you can be like, just as useful as anyone else, as opposed to um, you running around for classic or you running around for Spectre. Now you become more of a liability, especially on defense, where like, um, where like you'll very very easily lose map control by doing stuff like that. Compared to at least with attack, you can choose which areas that you want to push. You can choose to put yourself into like a long range long range situation. For example, like for example, if you are an attack, you bought a marshal. You can choose to peek C along with the marshal. You can choose to peek C along with that marshal. And yeah, some other reasons for having like specific loadout. Maybe you'll you'll buy a shoddy because you expect them to come sewers or something. So you play close range sewers with a shoddy, or you play garage with a shoddy. But those are more specific reasons or reasons for for having a specific loadout. Most of the time, you should just, just fall by with your team. Okay. And, and last issue, a lot of times, uh, constantly ask constantly ask yourself, why are you reloading? Because a lot of times, you, you reload, which is like really detrimental. And you wouldn't really punish for it that much, but eventually, you, you, kinda, you will get punished for that. Where like you reload in the middle of a gunfight. You reload while your team is about to get swung on. You reload while your team's teammates are in a gunfight. Those time, those two, three seconds, whatever that you're reloading, you're like you're useless, you're vulnerable. Well, like you're a liability, or now your teammate can die, and you can't do anything about it. All right. Any questions so far? Uh, no. All right. Any questions from any of the viewers? I have an unrelated question, like, like not related to this VOD, just like I'm, I'm going to wait until like after all of this is done before I ask it. Okay. Alright, so if there's nothing else, I'm going to stop the recording here.